I was very worried. I bet you were worried. We were all worried. We were all worried about our vaginas. We were worried about what we think about vaginas and even more worried that we don't think about them. Hi, I'm Mabanu Modi Kotwal and you're watching me on Talkative Tidbits. I do think that, you know, with the new uh, new groups that are writing their own plays and performing them, it had, there has been some involvement. I mean, 16 years ago, the word vagina was not even uttered in India. And at least if there's nothing that the vagina monologues has achieved, it's made the whole of India very aware of what the vagina stands for, which is the spirit of the woman. Because the, we don't perform this play only for... Uh, the so-called converted, but we do them in the bastis and they're in Hindi. And there the women take them up, uh, t react to them as well as the English version audiences do. I suddenly think that the vagina monologues has been a path-breaking play in that direction. It's very br brutal, it's very explicit. It's funny, it's the perfect entertainment package. Lots of women have come up to us after viewing the play and told us their life stories. And these, these have been really life-changing stories. About a few years ago, two, three years ago, whilst the play was being done, um, performed, a woman in the audience fainted. And she just fell to the floor and she was sobbing and weeping. And I thought maybe we stopped the play, took her to the green room, made her rest, continued with the play. And the point at which she fainted was when the, mm, the piece about a little child being raped by the uncle was going on. Later on, after the play was over, she told us that she had been burdened with this uh, load on her mind about how her sister, who was 10 years old, was raped by her uncle and how she herself walked in while this was going on. And she said that her parents said absolutely nothing and she was very upset and she said, I just found that watching this on stage really brought a closure to my, uh, to my mind, you know, to this episode in my mind. And then six months later, the sister turned up in Delhi. The little girl, who had now grown to be 17 or 18, turned up and she said, you know, that, that was my sister and I was the girl who... So it, it somehow brings out, people want to share. People want to share what they've gone through. Women come to us and talk about genital mutilation, female genital mutilation, of how their daughters were going to be genitally mutilated. One woman told us that she had been ostracized by her whole community, including her husband who had left her because she would not, she would not allow her daughter to be cir uh, circumcised or whatever, that mutilated, uh, ge genitally mutilated. There's a very funny story also. It's not very funny, but it, I found it funny later on. I was going to Delhi and uh, <clears throat> a woman across the aisle got up in the plane and she said, can I give you a hug? And I said, okay, but I just want to know why. So she took out her mobile phone and uh, she showed me a picture of a man standing next to me. And she said, this was the happiest moment in my life. So I was very happy. I said, I'm so delighted that you found the right man because the tagline of the vagina monologues is, if you want to find a good man, go and view the vagina monologues. And she said, no, ma'am. This was just the opposite. When I wa watched your play, I realized that I just had to walk out of a three and a half year abusive marriage. So I made my ex-husband stand next to you and have a picture to commemorate that moment. So that was a life changing and I, I really didn't know whether to feel happy or guilty. And she said, no, please don't feel guilty because that was really the happiest moment of my life. No, I didn't exp experience any challenges at all, okay. uh, except from my own community, the theatre community. Yeah. Because even now we are not allowed to perform at the NCPA, we are not allowed to perform at 
auditoria which are run by the Catholic Church like the Sophia Baba or the St. Andrews. So these are the challenges that we face. We face absolutely no challenges where audiences are concerned. But yes, in other cities it really amuses me that when vagina monologues had to be performed, we had to get the permission of the police commissioner. It had to send the script to him. And I really don't understand how a police commissioner has the sensibilities to, to judge a play by its content, you know, whether it should be shown or not shown. And we faced some uh, challenges in Chennai when we first went there in 2004 with Jane. Uh, we were supposed to go and raise money for a shelter there. And uh, two hours before we were to board the plane, we were told that the then police commissioner of Chennai had banned our entry into the city, stating that we would be disturbing the law and order situation there. How seven perfectly non-violent women propagating non-violence towards women we're going to disturb the law and order situation in a city like Chennai, considering the South Indian film promos that you must be watching on television <laughs> was beyond me. But uh, nine and a half years after that day, we did go to Chennai and we had the most fabulous shows there. There have been uh, changes, but not many because really when playwrights write on women's issues or about women, uh, they've been quite frank, quite open, at times quite brutal and uh, I don't think there's a great change in the Western uh, portrayal of women in plays. As far as the Indian uh, plays are concerned, yes, there has been some change. Previously, we used to have men who used to dress as women and uh, recently, I believe there's a play that uh, one of the girls who acts in the vagina monologues, uh, she's done a play, a Shakespeare play. Uh, in which the men dressed as women and the women took the roles of the men. So I think that's a great change. Yes, I do think that movies, are, movies and especially television is extremely regressive as far as women's issues are concerned. And I mean, I still see things on television, you know, where the woman is shown screaming and shouting and abusing another woman. And I feel that this in a country like ours, where the masses are so impressionable and quite uneducated, I think this is an extremely regressive, uh, ish, uh, regressive way of portraying women. Yes, there are, I think some of Vijay Tendulkar's plays were very feminist in their, uh, you know, portrayal. They were also, there was also a lot of portrayal of patriarchy in his plays. I think Girish Karnat's plays are fantastic. But I've done another play that has been equally radical uh, called Shirley, titled Shirley Valentine. It's a one woman play that runs for a, an hour and a half and it is one of the most fantastic scripts that I've ever read and ever read or performed, actually. I was very worried. I bet you were worried. We were all worried. We were all worried about our vaginas. We were worried about what we think about vaginas and even more worried that we don't think about them. We were worried about our own vaginas. They needed a context about the vaginas, a community, a culture of vaginas. There's so much darkness and secrecy surrounding them, like the Indian Swiss bank accounts. Nobody ever reports back from there. <laughs>